And we want to bring in from Kyiv, Ukraine, Dr. Jason J. Smart, special correspondent with the Kyiv Post. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to Capper Review. So you've had a front row seat to the president's visit to Ukraine. Talk to us about how important this visit was to Ukrainians, but also how symbolic this trip was to President Putin in Russia. Uh, this visit was extremely important, and the Ukrainians have wanted for a long time to see President Biden come visit. And his, his visit did excite people. I could tell you it was a Ukraine, uh, and it was uh, what everyone was talking about. Now, it's for Putin, I think, quite a shock. I mean, his it did upstage him for sure, and his speech uh, that came today uh, got a lot less of attention due to President Biden's good timing. So you also have a unique tie to this war because for the past 13 years, you've been banned from Russia for going against Vladimir Putin. Talk to us about what happened that led to this ban. So about 13 years ago, I was working with the Russian opposition to Putin, uh, the Democratic opposition. And sure enough, that is not a very popular thing. The Kremlin does not like that very much that they were uh, decided to no longer allow me to enter the Russian Federation for life uh, as they uh, categorized me as being a threat to the nation's security. And so as a result of that, I have not been back to Russia since then. Uh, and it's something that I can't say I greatly regret. So Jason, what does your story, really just anyone who goes against the Russian government, have to say about the narrative that President Putin wants to control? Well, the fact of the matter is that Vladimir Putin is weak. If he was strong, he would not be afraid of a democracy. If he was strong, he would not be afraid of those who oppose him. But in fact, he is extremely scared of them. And the way that he demonstrates that is by putting his opponents in prison, forcing them to flee the country, or by you know banning foreigners from entering the country, banning the foreign press from Russia. And the reason is simply because he is scared of the truth and he's scared of his own people. So speaking of weakness, what are you hearing about Putin's health? Because there has been speculation that he's actually really sick. So is this something that Russia is prepared for if he dies? So if Putin were to die, a lot could happen. And the reality is that it's probably going to be a very, uh, we could say, exciting period of time as a lot of people jockeying for power. It would be unlikely they would follow the constitutional method of how the new president should come to power. More likely, there'd be different oligarchs and factions fighting for power. And yes, it does appear that he, his health is not great, and he is already uh, 70 years old. So at any time, you know, his health could fail him, and that would create quite a chain reaction of different events that would take place. So, okay, how concerned should we be then about his successor? Uh, I think that if we're talking in the grand scheme, I think the successor is probably not something I'd worry too much about. The fact is we've seen that Putin himself uh, is engaged in international terrorism. So it can't get much worse than this. And the reality is that his successor is unlikely to be driven by ideology. He's much more likely in improving, gaining more wealth, gaining more uh, power, and for his own ego. It's going to be less motivated by Putin's uh, ideology, which is one of expansion and has, as we've seen, destabilized uh, many of countries around the world. And Jason, you've actually worked with the presidential campaigns of Senator John McCain and Senator Ted Cruz. Can you talk to us about your serving as a political advisor in Ukraine? Why did you choose Ukraine to stay in an area that has just so much conflict and so dangerous? Well, Ukraine's a country I know really well. I've been going back to Ukraine since I was probably 19 years old. So it's a country I've spent my entire adult life going to, and it's a country that I studied. I have my master's, my PhD, my bachelor's, all relate back to uh, Russian post-Soviet politics. And so that is an area that I study, and uh, it's been a fantastic place. Ukraine is a wonderful country, and after this war was over, uh, I hope you come and visit. It's a great place to be. So what do you think needs to happen then to finally stop the atrocities, to stop the war in Ukraine? The key for Ukraine at this point is to receive long-range weapons. If it has the ability to have something like Atacom, so the other weapons that allow it to shoot from a longer distance, uh, it will be able to protect a lot of Ukrainian lives, and this war will conclude sooner. The more armed Ukraine is, this war will end. All right, Dr. Jason J. Smart in Kiev, Ukraine, thank you so much for joining us on Capital Review and for your time. Thank you so much.